The name of the book is Sex and World Peace. We had originally thought to call it Sex and War, but we discovered that two male authors had already written a very nice book about that topic. So we thought to ourselves, ah, oh, it's probably appropriate, you know, that uh, men have written Sex and War, and then uh, three women and one man have, have written Sex and World Peace, because we think that the linkage is there. Well, one of the main messages that we've been able to uh, develop through our empirical research is that the best predictor of a nation state's stability and security is not their level of democracy, it's not their level of wealth, it's not what Huntington civilization they belong to. The best predictor of a state's stability and security is the level of violence against women in society. Okay, we think that there is a link between what's happening at the micro level with women in the country and what kind of behavior you're seeing from the state on the world stage. So we've got the evidence to back that up. And what, uh, what I would like to communicate to policymakers is that if you think this is some sort of stretch or some sort of ideology, you know, no. I mean, it's, these types of statements are based on uh, rigorous empirical analysis. There's something to it. It's not just political correctness. And nation states would do well to think perhaps even more about their obligations under CEDA, the con convention on the elimination of all forms of discrimination against women than they are in, say, exporting democracy or exporting free market capitalism. You would do more to rectify the stability, security of the nation state by looking to those treaty obligations than to perhaps other treaty obligations. Um, one of the things that we quickly discovered was that um, anecdotes abound, uh, but anecdotes do not add up to data. And so we were determined as social scientists to make a, a compelling empirical argument based on aggregate statistical testing to show the associations between what's happening with women and what's happening with states. Uh, so we developed the Women's Stats Database, which is the largest compilation of information on the status of women available anywhere in the world today. Over 325 variables for 175 countries, all those countries with at least 200,000 population. And so with this massive database, uh, we were able to uh, look at, at various aspects of women's lives, such as the physical security of women, uh, such as trafficking in women, uh, such as sex ratio and son preference, such as inequity in family law, polygyny, female genital cutting, age of marriage, you name it, we're able to take a look and begin to compare nations concerning their practices in these areas. I have been involved with the Women's Stats Project from its beginning. Um, Professor Hudson and I were colleagues at BYU and um, she came to me with this idea and so we got together, hired student coders and we started to come up with the variables and we kept adding variables and started to gather funding to create this, this database and then I helped um, with the map creation um, showing the distribution, the patterns of all of the different um, indicators of the status of women. Um, I then, I, I'm a Middle East geographer, I speak Arabic and I've lived in the Middle East um, in Indonesia and so I then added a lot of the kind of bottom-up um, ideas coming out of the Islamic world where women Muslim women themselves are implementing change, are taking action, are doing things. We didn't feel like it was us to tell others what to do necessarily, but we gave ideas and we used examples from women um, doing good things. Yes, we've actually been uh, criticized by some who say we should charge for our database, but our feeling is that we want to lower the barriers for people from all walks of life to begin to see and access information on the situation of women. Uh, and so we have had uh, quite a number of people who've been interested in our work. The United Nations has asked us out on three separate occasions. The Senate Foreign Relations Committee used our data in order to create a uh, background briefing papers on the international violence against women law. Uh, we've been invited out to DOD. We've, uh, we've done some work for DITRA, the Defense Threat Reduction Agency. So there's a, a, a wide variety of people who are interested in what the data show. Right? They don't want stories. They want what does the data actually show. And we're able to provide that. What's exciting is that the United States is developing a, a national action plan uh, to implement this kind of uh, mainstreaming of women into national security, diplomacy, and foreign policy context. 
And so we feel that we could provide the information that would help make this a, a grounded and effective action plan.